In early 1941, the British Commonwealth experienced a major victory through Operation Compass, in the Western Desert Campaign in the North African Theater. Seeing the destruction of the Italian 10th Army, the British then shifted most of the Western Desert 13th Corps troops led directly by Lt. Gen. Richard O'Connor to Greece. The British Middle East Command then focused more on the battle in Greece and ordered its remaining troops in the Western Desert to take a defensive stance. After the departure of the 13th Corps, British forces in the Western Desert were taken by headquarters Cyrenaica, with its commander Lt. Gen. Philip Neem. Not long after, the Middle East Command began to strengthen Cyrenaica by bringing in a number of troops, one of which was the Force Commando Force, which began to depart at the beginning of that year. Under the command of Colonel Robert Laycock, the 2000 Force troops consisted of three commando troops namely, No. 7 Commando, No. 8 Guards Commando, No. 11 Scottish Commando and the Falbut Section. These troops arrived in Alexandria, Egypt in mid-March 1941, which was then reinforced by Commando No. 50 and No. 52 Commando. No. 3 Commando was also part of Force, but did not take part, having been assigned to the Norwegian mission. To avoid suspicion from the Axis forces, the British disguised the Force troops as ordinary regular troops. Command No. 7 is Battalion A, Command No. 8 is Battalion B and Command No. 11 is Battalion C. Meanwhile the two commandos that had just joined were designated as Battalion D. In its operations four Force battalions became a brigade under the British 6th Infantry Division, part of the Middle East Command. However, what is unique is that even though the troops were at brigade level, Laycock's rank remained colonel and was not upgraded to brigadier. Apart from that, the commandos also lost their function because they were made into regular troops, even more like reserve troops, and their headquarters were very far from the Cyrenaica headquarters. On the other hand, Germany started Operation Sonnenblum by sending General Lieutenant Erwin Rommel along with the Embryonic Africa Corps to support Italy which was badly defeated in Operation Compass. Rommel's orders were to reinforce the Italian troops and take a defensive stance. However, it turned out that Rommel had his own agenda and chose to attack immediately. With the approval of the new Italian Commander General Italo Garibaldi, Rommel ordered the 5th Light Division of the Africa Corps reinforced by two Italian divisions to advance from Serta towards the outskirts of El Aghela and began the attack on 24 March 1941. The Africa Corps' surprise attack was not anticipated by Commonwealth forces and resulted in El Aghela being quickly captured. After establishing a base in El Aguilia, the Axis troops then moved back to take Marsa El Brega, Benghazi, Cyrenaica, Mahili until they managed to reach the Libyan-Egyptian border at Salem, and succeeded in surrounding Australian troops in Tobruk on 15 April 1941. During this attack there was tension between Germany and Italy. General Garibaldi ordered Rommel to stop at Marsa El Brega, but Rommel ignored the order and continued toward Salem. Via radio message Rommel said, One cannot let a unique opportunity pass you by just for the sake of trivial matters. Garibaldi, who was very annoyed, then chose to retreat, leaving a small part of his unit to continue to advance with the German troops. In the end, the African Corps experienced a problem, namely that there was no available fuel supply, and had to be sent using tankers from Europe. Rommel also asked for reinforcements, but OKW refused because they were preparing for Operation Barbarossa. 
Apart from successfully pinning down the remaining Cyrenaica headquarters troops in Tobruk, the Africa Corps also succeeded in capturing Lt. Gen. Philip Neem and Lt. Gen. Richard O'Connor who had just arrived from Cairo. Also captured were Major Gen. Michael Gambier Perry, commander of the British 2nd Armoured, Brigadier John Frederick Boyce Coombe accompanying Gen. O'Connor, and Brigadier Edward William Drummond Vaughan, commander of the Indian 3rd Motor Brigade. Seeing the defeat of the Cyrenica headquarters troops and the destruction of most of its armored division's tanks, the British then reactivated the 13th Corps as the Western Desert headquarters, including changing the lay force mission which had been concentrated at the Alexandria headquarters. Battalion A or No. 7 Commando led by Lt. Col. Colvin, reinforced by the Royal Tank Regiment or RTR, received their first task to land on Bardia Beach on the evening of April 19. With the main mission of disrupting enemy communication lines and destroying as many other installations as possible. Bardia itself is the former headquarters of the Italian 23rd Corps, part of the Italian 10th Army, which was destroyed. And according to intelligence data there is still active communications equipment and the activities of enemy armed forces. However, it was not an easy matter to get to Bardia, because in the Salem area where the commandos would pass, there were German armored troops. On April 19, transported by cargo ship and escorted by one anti-aircraft cruiser and three destroyers, Battalion A, which was divided into seven detachments, immediately departed for Bardia Beach. After several hours of sea travel the attacking force arrived at the Bardia Sea, without being detected by the German troops in Salem. The problem arose when the landing craft started to be lowered. One landing craft could not be deployed at all and some equipment was also damaged, delaying the attack time. Problems arose again when the ALC assault force began to move towards the beach. The Fallbot unit tasked with providing guidance lights on the coast did not appear, because the submarine carrying them was identified as enemy and came under heavy fire from its own ships. Due to the absence of a guide from the beach, one of the attacking groups was delayed for 15 minutes and several ALC ships landed on the wrong beach. However, they were quite lucky because the coast they were on was devoid of enemy troops, and the attackers could freely enter the interior. In its development, several detachments succeeded in destroying infrastructure as ordered. However, there were detachments that did not find their targets at all, and did not even find a single enemy soldier. It turned out that there was an intelligence error and Bardia was attacked by the commandos in an empty state, without any Italian or German troops. Even though there were no enemy soldiers in Bardia, the commandos were very alert and because of their high alertness they thought that another commando who was approaching was a German patrol. As a result, friendly fire broke out which killed one of the officers. After destroying several important installations as ordered, the six detachments hurriedly returned to the cargo ship. However, a detachment of 70 people actually got the compass wrong and headed straight for Tobruk or the western side of Bardia, even though they departed from the eastern side of Bardia. As a result, 70 commandos were captured by German troops and then became prisoners of war. Some people felt very upset because they didn't have the same number of troops returning from the mission as when they left. In fact, one soldier wrote on the deck of the ship that, never in history has the effort of so few been disrupted by so many. Although there was no real success, the commando attack on Bardia was not a complete failure. The appearance of the commandos forced Rommel to divert his armored troops in Solemn, in order to increase guard in the rear area. 
Rommel also couldn't do much because Germany still couldn't provide reinforcements. Tobruk's position was also not completely surrounded and supplies could still be sent by sea. As a result, the Africa Africa Corps actually chose to survive, and just fried eggs on their panzers. The British learned a valuable lesson from the commando raid on Bardia. They became more careful in investigating the accuracy of intelligence and did not use the commandos as regular troops, or even as reserve troops. Meanwhile, the Middle East Command's main mistake in Rommel's counteroffensive was that it underestimated the Germans, thereby not anticipating the attack from the Africa Corps. And of course not using commando troops to cover the main troops who were retreating, so that most of the troops were destroyed and isolated in Tobruk. After the attack on Bardia, Lay Force was sent to Greece to take part in the Battle of Crete, but failed to reach the dock due to bad weather. And after being tossed about in the sea, these troops managed to land in Suda Bay, which was then assigned to cover the British withdrawal towards Fakia. On the Axis side due to lack of cooperation with Rommel, Italy was forced to replace Italo Garibaldi with a new commander-in-chief. Garibaldi himself was then transferred to the Soviet Eastern Front to command the Italian army in the Battle of Stalingrad. Meanwhile, the four British generals who were captured were only released after Italy surrendered in September 1943, or several months after Africa Corps surrendered completely.